Howdy, and uh, welcome back. If you haven't been here before, my name is Brady and I would love to be your friend. Now in this video, I wanna talk about a technique that I love using to help guide the viewer's eye toward a particular subject in the frame, especially in scenes with very even and soft and ambient lighting the eyes can tend to wander throughout the scene and not go where you want them to. So I wanna talk about in this video, a technique that I use to help guide the viewer's eye to whatever subject I would like them to go to. One thing that I've been doing and one that I wanna talk about in this video is uh, really using a slash of light to almost be an arrow or painting in light where I want the light to fall and the attention to go to. And in this video, we're gonna talk about, you know, why, how I do it and uh, what this looks like. So looking at the frame, you've got me sitting on the floor playing piano. You've got a couple in frame practicals and this really warm sunset feel. Now, you can see that my camera is also exposed for the windows and we've got a few in frame practicals and that slash of light coming through on the floor. But if we take everything away, we've just got a lot of ambient light spilling throughout the room. And then that's when my eyes start to wander towards the window or to the back wall or ultimately away from myself being the subject. And that's something that I always wanna avoid. I don't want somebody's eyes to wander throughout the frame. But now with bringing in this slash of sunlight, essentially, you're telling the viewer, hey, Brady on the floor playing the piano is the focus. This is where you need to look. Look here, pay attention. So now that we've seen the difference between just having ambient soft light in the room and the exposure brought up, versus bringing in this light that really paints in where to look for the viewer, I wanna talk about now breaking it down and how I got this look and what I did to really get to this point. So the first thing, stripping it back, I added in shears over the window outside. Yes, I don't have shears in my apartment yet. Don't make fun of me for that, please. But I did this because one, it's gonna kind of mask the outside eliminate some of the distractions and also bring down some of the exposure so I don't have to pump as much bright light through the window by dropping down a stop or two from the windows. Now my lights don't need to be as bright to combat that. And then I exposed my camera for the windows with the shears having been over them. So now we're just in time to bring in a first light and might be my favorite, or second favorite, favorite light is the Amaran F, the flexible lights that they have. I've got one lighting me right now, an F21X. That's aside from the point, song for another day. I'm sorry, I get distracted. Second favorite light, 600D. That's what I brought in for my light of choice because it is a bright daylight source. So I put the 600D outside the window on my balcony on a C-stand and on that C-stand as well on that 600D, I used a spotlight mount. And the spotlight mount, one, it's my favorite light modifier, but two, if you don't know what it is, ultimately it's gonna be a, a lens, like a lens for your camera, but for your light. It's gonna make your beam focusable and give you different beam angles as well, so you can shape it and really paint in exactly where you need, kind of how we're painting in this streak of light. So I knew that a spotlight mount would be a great decision, and then additionally I added in a gobo as well. Now a gobo is just a little metal sheet that you're gonna add in front of this lens element and the spotlight mount, and it's gonna have different variety of different textures to it, creating texture to the light. So with the spotlight and the 600D out there, I took the blades of the spotlight mount and I just shaped this to be a very narrow beam. The blades in the spotlight mount make it easy to really shape and figure out how wide or narrow you want this spread of light to be. And I really just wanted this slash coming across the floor. So I took those blades and just moved in this beam to be very narrow and long. So we've got the spotlight with the 600D. Now say you do not have a spotlight mount and you do not have that to work with in your arsenal. Well, that's not the end of the world. You can also, of course, use, say you've got a reflector dish with your point source light. And a point source light is important because you want this hard slash for this particular look. So say you've got your point source and a reflector dish, you can take, instead of a gobo, you can have either a kukuloris, which is just like a wooden board with texture through it, emulating brush or trees, or you can go outside and grab a tree branch and stick it in front of your light source. And then also using a flag or a black poster card to really cut in and flag off where you want your light to spill into, emulating those blades of the light as well. So if you don't have a spotlight mount, it's not the end of the world. You just want a hard light source and then you can shape it accordingly using things like tree branches or flags or black poster card just to shape in that light a little more. But I personally love the spotlight mount and I think it's a great investment for your kit if you've got a lot of Bowens mount light sources. But moving forward, you see that this light here, this slash of light, the 600D, acts as a multi-purpose light essentially. It's acting as the key light lighting myself with this very hard, nice sunlight 
and then it's also lighting up the scene across the floor, lighting on the piano, lighting on the wall as well. So this is gonna be the key factor or key light essentially for the entire scene. And then I was looking at it and I was like, well, it's almost there. Looks pretty good. I don't think I want much more. But I also wanted to add in just like practicals, a little practical light. So we started with that Edison bulb that you see the floor lamp. I've just got that there. And I put that on a dimmer and I dimmed it real low just so it's not blown out in the background and distracting. And then additionally with these two other practicals that are just kind of scattered throughout the floor, I used an Aperture B7C in both of them. And uh, in the frame left one, I put that there just to spill up on the wall there and then on the frame right one you can see it just by the piano adding a little bit more vis visual interest on the floor. Both of those I went inside a slink and set them to 2700 Kelvin just for a warm contrasty color contrasty pop of light throughout the scene. That's really it honestly and it's not an intricate setup at all. I did add a significant amount of haze just because why not? You guys know me, I love my haze. So I did add some haze and that also added to these pools of light and diffused the light a little bit, made it a, you know, a tad more soft and pleasing as well because haze will do that. It'll diffuse and disperse the light a little bit more. But that ultimately is it. We had the slash of light and then these practicals and that was entirely it. And I wanted to keep it simple just to talk about the main focus, which is guiding the viewer's eye to where you want them to using painting light. Now. Not every scene calls for harsh sunlight or a sunset type of feel. Sometimes you need this very soft ambient light and going back to the beginning, you might get confused. How do you do this if there's soft ambient light, but with soft ambient light, your eyes you know, bounce around. But you can use these same tactics and just flag off. Instead of using a spotlight mount, you've got your soft source and then you can bring in a flag and a floppy and really just create these barn doors for the light to barely come through in the direction that you want it to and still use the same foundation of these techniques where we're talking about painting in little sections and guiding the viewer's eye and making little exposure pops where you want the viewer's eye to go to. Um, similar to the video actually I did uh, last week on my channel as well with using pools of light. So these can kind of go hand in hand as well. So don't get confused if you don't have a sunset scene or this golden hour harsh sunlight scene. You can't do this at all. No, you can definitely apply it in its own way to your own particular scenes. So please, without further ado, that completes this video. Go ahead and try this on your own particular shoots and see how it improves your footage. But until next time, uh, adios amigos.